Hello, everyone. Since last we met, this podcast has a new name: Storytime Classics Audio. I'm thrilled to share with you our plans for season two, as well as how you can help us in producing more free short stories. Episodes for season two will be posted on Mondays, starting March 27th. In our lineup, we have Cinderella, Don Quixote and the Windmills, The Velveteen Rabbit, Pandora's Box. Jack and the Beanstalk, Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, and Doctor Doolittle goes to court. Storytime Classics Audio is dedicated to sharing family-friendly stories in a way that is both entertaining and educational. The podcast commits to share short stories for free, but we can't do it alone. The easiest way to support Storytime Classics Audio is to purchase our production of *The Reluctant Dragon*, available for only three dollars and fifty cents on Spotify, Barnes and Noble, Apple Books, and Google Play. A link is in the description. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to hit that follow button and then share these stories with your friends. And now, for your enjoyment, here is a short excerpt from *The Reluctant Dragon*. Next day, after he'd had his tea, the boy strolled up the chalky track that led to the summit of the downs, and there, sure enough, he found the dragon stretched lazily on the sward in front of his cave. The view from that point was a magnificent one. To the right and left, the bare and willowy leagues of downs. In front, the vale with its clustered homesteads, its threads of white roads running through orchards and well-tilled acreage, and, far away, a hint of grey old cities on the horizon. A cool breeze played over the surface of the grass, and the silver shoulder of a large moon was showing above distant junipers. No wonder the dragon seemed in a peaceful and contented mood, Indeed, as the boy approached, he could hear the beast purring in a happy regularity. Well, we live and learn, he said to himself. None of my books ever told me that dragons purred. Hello, dragon, said the boy quietly when he had got up to him. The dragon, on hearing the approaching footsteps, made the beginning of a courteous effort to rise. But when he saw it was a boy, he set his eyebrows severely. Now don't you hit me, he said, or bang stones or squirt water or anything. I won't have it, I tell you. Not going to hit you, said the boy warily, dropping on the grass beside the beast. And don't, for goodness sake, keep on saying don't. I hear so much of it, and it's monotonous and makes me tired. I've simply looked in to ask you how you were and all that sort of thing. But if I'm in the way, I can easily clear out. I've lots of friends, and no one can say I'm in the habit of shoving myself in where I'm not wanted. No, no, don't go off in a huff, said the dragon hastily. Fact is, I'm as happy up here as the day is long. Never without an occupation, dear fellow, never without an occupation. And yet, between ourselves, it is a trifle dull at times. The boy bit off a stalk of grass and chewed it. Going to make a long stay here? He asked politely. Can't hardly say at present, replied the dragon. It seems a nice place enough, but I've only been here a short time, and one must look about and reflect and consider before settling down. It's a rather serious thing, settling down. Besides, now I'm going to tell you something. You'd never guess it if you tried ever so. Fact is, I'm such a confoundedly lazy beggar. You surprise me, said the boy civilly. It's the sad truth, the dragon went on, settling down between his paws and evidently delighted to have found a listener at last. And I fancy that's really how I came to be here. You see, all the other fellows were so active and earnest and all that sort of thing. Always rampaging and skirmishing and scouring the desert sands and pacing the margin of the sea and chasing knights all over the place and devouring damsels and going on generally, whereas I liked to get my meals regular and then to prop my back against a bit of rock and snooze a bit and wake up and think of things going on and how they kept on just the same, you know. 
So when it happened, I got fairly caught. When what happened, please? asked the boy. That's just what I don't precisely know, said the dragon. I suppose the earth sneezed or shook itself or the bottom dropped out of something. Anyhow, there was a shriek and a roar and a general stramash, and I found myself miles away underground and wedged in as tight as tight. Well, thank goodness my wants are few, and at any rate I had peace and quietness and wasn't always being asked to come along and do something. And I've got such an active mind, always occupied, I assure you. But time went on, and there was a certain sameness about life. And at last I began to think it would be fun to work my way upstairs and see what you other fellows were doing. So I scratched and burrowed and worked this way and that way, and at last I came out through this cave here. And I like the country, and the view, and the people, what I've seen of them. And on the whole, I feel inclined to settle down here. What's your mind always preoccupied about? asked the boy. That's what I want to know. The dragon coloured slightly and looked away. Presently he said bashfully, Did you ever, just for fun, try to make up poetry, verses, you know? Course I have, said the boy. Heaps of it. And some of it's quite good, I feel sure. Only there's no one here cares about it. Mother's very kind and all that, when I read it to her, and so's father for that matter. But somehow they don't seem to... Exactly, cried the dragon. My own case exactly. They don't seem to, and you can't argue with them about it. Now you've got culture, you have. I could tell it on you at once, and I should like your candid opinion about some little things I threw off lightly when I was down there. I'm awfully pleased to have met you. And I'm hoping the others will be equally agreeable. There was a very nice old gentleman up here only last night, but he didn't seem to want to intrude. That was my father, said the boy, and he is a nice old gentleman, and I'll introduce you some day if you like. Can't you two come up here and dine or something tomorrow? asked the dragon eagerly. Only, of course, if you've got nothing better to do, he added politely. Thanks, awfully, said the boy. But we don't go out anywhere without my mother, and to tell you the truth, I'm afraid she mightn't quite approve of you. You see, there's no getting over the hard fact that you're a dragon, is there? And when you talk of settling down and the neighbours and so on, I can't help feeling that you don't quite realise your position. You're an enemy of the human race, you see. Haven't got an enemy in the world, said the dragon cheerfully. Too lazy to make em to begin with. And if I do read other fellows my poetry, I'm always ready to listen to theirs. Oh dear, cried the boy. I wish you'd try to grasp the situation properly. When the other people find you out, they'll come after you with spears and swords and all sorts of things. You'll have to be exterminated, according to their way of looking at it. You're a scourge and a pest and a baneful monster. Not a word of truth in it said the dragon, wagging his head solemnly. Character will bear the strictest investigation. And now there's a little sonnet thing I've been working on when you appeared on the scene. Oh, if you won't be sensible, cried the boy, getting up. I'm going off home. No, I can't stop for sonnets. My mother's sitting up. I'll look you up tomorrow sometime or other. And do, for goodness sake, try and realise that you're a pestilential scourge and you'll find yourself in a most awful fix. Good night. The boy found it an easy matter to set the mind of his parents at ease about his new friend. They had always left that branch to him, and they took his word without a murmur. The shepherd was formally introduced, and many compliments and kind inquiries were exchanged. His wife, however, though expressing her willingness to do anything she could to mend things or set the cave to rights or cook a little something when the dragon had been poring over sonnets and forgotten his meals, as male things will do, could not be brought to recognize him formally. The fact that he was a dragon and they didn't know who he was seemed to count for everything with her. She made no objection, however, to her little son spending his evenings with the dragon quietly 
so long as he was home by nine o'clock, and many a pleasant night they had, sitting on the sward while the dragon told stories of old, old times, when dragons were quite plentiful, and the world was a livelier place than it is now, and life was full of thrills and jumps and surprises. What the boy feared, however, soon came to pass. The most modest and retiring dragon in the world, if he's as big as four cart horses and covered with blue scales, cannot keep altogether out of the public view. And so, in the village tavern of nights, the fact that a real live dragon sat brooding in the cave on the downs was naturally a subject for talk. Though the villagers were extremely frightened, they were rather proud as well. It was a distinction to have a dragon of your own, and it was felt to be a feather in the cap of the village. Still, all were agreed that this sort of thing couldn't be allowed to go on. The dreadful beast must be exterminated. The countryside must be freed from this pest, this terror, this destroying scourge. The fact that not even a hen roost was the worse for the dragon's arrival wasn't allowed to have anything to do with it. He was a dragon, and he couldn't deny it, and if he didn't choose to behave as such, that was his own lookout. But in spite of much valiant talk, no hero was found willing to take sword and spear and free the suffering village and win deathless fame, and each night's heated discussion always ended in nothing. Meanwhile, the dragon, a happy bohemian, lolled on the turf, enjoyed the sunsets, told antediluvian anecdotes to the boy, and polished his old verses while meditating on fresh ones. Thank you for listening to this episode of Storytime Classics Audio. Storytime Classics Audio is dedicated to sharing family-friendly stories in a way that is both entertaining and educational. The podcast commits to share short stories for free, but we can't do it alone. The easiest way to support Storytime Classics Audio is to purchase our production of The Reluctant Dragon, available for only $3.50 on Spotify, Barnes & Noble, Apple Books, and Google Play. A link is in the description. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to hit that follow button and then share these stories with your friends.